Hey, Brian. Sorry I was a little bit late getting back to you. Been really busier lately between work and home and family stuff. But like I promised, I just want to touch on a couple of things on your that you said in your video. Some of the things I agree with you. Some of the other things that you know, we can agree to disagree, that's okay. I'm glad that you responded the way that you responded. Quite professional. I like your video. I like what you had to say, man. Somebody else already touched, I think, a little bit on the subjects of what I want to touch on. Uh, your example of you know, different breeds of dog being uh, a good example of evolution, being the first subject i like to touch on. Philip Johnson has a, a great rebuttal to this. Uh, I don't know if you've ever saw any of his stuff. In his DVD that's based on his book, Darwin on Trial, he mentions... Dawkins, Blind Watchmaker, and where Dawkins, I believe, mentions also this theory and using the different dog breeds. You know, people breed different dogs as an example of macroevolution. But as uh, but as Johnson puts it, this is just change within a species. And then we, so we just make the, the assumption that if we get change within a species, we can get change across species. And again, that is an unproven assumption among a lot of evolutionists. I like the way Johnson puts it, he says, you know, man has applied is intelligence over the thousands of years to breed these different types of breeds that these or he puts it these different types of freaks of nature that we call breeds, which can be all boiled down to just one basic dog, as you said, from nature or from wolves. Same DNA, same genetic makeup, same family, same species. But we can breed dogs until the cows come home. I mean, we can breed Great Danes until they're as big as elephants, but they will never change into elephants, you know what I'm saying? It's still a dog. And after a while, the degree of variations gives out as we, you know, exhaust the gene, gene pool and start hitting the boundaries of the DNA of that species. So, as you can see, this isn't, you know, despite, you know, Dawkins using it and, and a few others, this isn't really a good example of macroevolution or cross-species evolution. Although it is, it can be probably a good poster for uh, intelligent design in that man takes his intelligence, puts it towards a different breeding of animals, and comes up with all of these different variations of the same species. But again, it's just microevolution still within the species. And the second thing I wanted to quickly touch on is the abiogenesis theory or life from just chemical, chemical evolution. From my research on this subject, uh, it was in... Dr. Stanley Miller and his experiments were around 1952 when they successfully and under very carefully controlled laboratory conditions managed to produce eight of the 20 amino acids that are necessary to build proteins. Now, again, some evolutionists speculate that this is proof and others speculate that it, you know, keep it, that's very spectacle proof. To my knowledge, we still haven't, you know, after, I mean, this was 1952, 55 years later and with all the quantum leaps you know in the in the in every field of science that we've made since then to my knowledge I don't think we've been a, we have been successful in being able to produce those remaining those remaining 12 amino acids necessary to build proteins and another way I look at it that even if we could then do we still would we still be able to Know, take those, then take those amino acids and take those proteins and move them on towards the next steps of life. And again, you got a controlled situation here in, a, in an environment, controlled laboratory environment, versus you know billions of years ago in a very hostile Earth, young and a hostile Earth. According to the theory, that you know you would have to have also a perfect condition of air for all. 12, all 20 of these to be formed and to come together just right and to continue along the process towards basic life and then on towards complex life. Like I say, that there hasn't been anything pushed, to my knowledge, since these experiments 25, uh, 50 years ago. To me, that kind of says, okay, well, you know, they definitely hit some walls here in these experiments after they were all said and done. I don't know. But again, that's what just what I wanted to touch on. Uh, I like your video, Brian. I like your stuff. And again, I like that you think. I also also want to encourage you to, you know, don't just take my word for it, but investigate these things. Investigate both sides of this issue. Investigate both sides of every issue. And as you get older, Brian, you'll understand, I'm sure that there are a lot of things out there that we can't stuff in a test tube and test by normal scientific means and I just and I just want to encourage you to keep your mind as well as your heart open 
as you you know go through this life and look at different things. Always keep your heart as well as your mind open. I also want to throw in a picture here of uh, it seems you showed me Chelsea. Here's a picture of, of uh, our little freak of nature here, and her name is Abby. She's a Shih Tzu Palm Cross. Just a little thing. I think she weighs in at a hefty five pounds or so. Okay, I got to go. Got to run again. It seems like I'm always busy here with life and stuff going on. I don't, I give her now and then I get a chance to jump in on YouTube here, but uh, let's keep in touch, Brian. You take care. We'll talk to you later, buddy.